All right, let's get started. How's everybody doing? Uh, yep, it's definitely in the morning. Uh, happy day to a Dreamforce. We're excited to be with you today. Um, out of curiosity, who here has used the in, like, currently available local dev? Okay, a few of us. How many love it? <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, okay, 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 we got one. That, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, before we jump in and talk about developer productivity, uh, we'll show you a slide that you've probably seen 20, 30 times. Of course, make your decisions based on general availability. You'll see it another 30 times before you leave. You'll have it memorized, uh, so make sure to, to take a look at that. Before we jump in, uh, my name is Greg Wilworth. I'm Senior Director of Product, and thank you so much for joining us, uh, providing your feedback, letting us know that you love it. Most of you, unfortunately, hating local dev. That's why we're here, and I'm joined by my illustrious colleague, yeah, I'm Sue Berry. I'm a product manager in mobile, and I focus on improving developer experience for the mobile use cases. And so, ironically, all of you that put your hands down that have used local dev, that is not surprising to us. Uh, it's one of those things that we've heard numerous times. Uh, and, it, and as a product manager, one of the things that you're always looking for is passion. <laughs> and that is what we got in our LW status uh, survey, I think, 2022. Uh, basically, local dev experience is terrible. Uh, we can't mock data. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that is super unfortunate that like you're trying to provide this experience to improve productivity, but you're seeing people are having to fall back to that experience of where they make a change. They then have to deploy it up to their, their org, hit refresh, make the change, hit it, go back to the org, hit refresh. So in our research, it was anywhere from 10 seconds to two minutes. And anybody that's done that, that life cycle, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. It's a productivity killer for anybody. Uh, I'm just imagining writing some of our PRDs or something, and you know, I hit the back, back key, and it takes two minutes. Uh, I wouldn't write docs. Um, anyways. Yeah, so as we spoke to our developer community, and they gave us the feedback, we came away with five key principles for a solution that we want to improve upon. <clears throat> and the first one was quick local setup. So from day one, it should be easy for you to get started. We should build this in the tools that you're already using, and we need to pre-install as much as possible. We need to really lower the bar for you to be able to get started. And two, a unified developer experience. So I'm a mobile product manager. I definitely want the developer experience to be the same as the, for mobile to be the same as the desktop experience. And Greg, you've told me many times, like, you know, LWR experience sites, it must be the same experience as Lightning apps. You know, you shouldn't have to learn different ways that you're building LWCs for experience sites versus mobile apps versus desktop. Uh, quick feedback loop. Iterative development should be just that. It should be quick and simple. And we need to remember that as we are building this solution. The fourth one is environmental parity. So it's really important that no matter, uh, as you're building your LWCs, you can see how that LWC is going to behave as it will in production. So we got a lot of feedback that I can preview for a single LWC but then I have no idea, is this going to look good with other components around it? How is it going to behave in the Lightning app? So being able to preview and debug in, an, um, in that larger context of the application is really imperative. And then debugging, debugging, debugging. I think we've all been there where we're like, what is going on with my component right now? I need more information. So we need to put this where you can get the proper debugging. We can add better debugging so that you know, we can all build effectively. And so with that, with that we, we ended up getting to work. Actually, like, now that I think about it, we, I think we met a little over four years yeah, ago, four right? Years ago. And, and I was walking past the table, and she, like, you know, because at the time I was the LWCPM, and she was like, we need to talk about local dev. <laughs> and so it's been four years. We finally are on the stage. We get the benefit of staying on the stage. But there's a bunch of UI, UX researchers and engineers that made this happen, and we're excited to announce. Yeah, that our, the new and improved local dev is beta. It is available to you today. There's no more waiting. You can, and after the session, you can go and you can try it out on your sandbox and your scratch orgs. And we have delivered that unified developer experience. So whether you're building LWCs for LW experience sites, for mobile, or for lightning apps on desktop, you get the same developer experience across all of those different environments. And you can view your LWCs in the context of that larger application. So you can put it on that Lightning page or on that site and get those previews and debug it while you're viewing it in the context of the application. And then the iterative development 
is, it hasn't been faster than with instant previews. And we've gotten feedback already from our developer community that we're seeing speeds four times faster at least than what it was before. So that's really impressive, and I think a lot faster. Yeah, that, that, that's a minimum. And what's great is we've also been getting passionate feedback that's now positive. Uh, so we've been, we've been working with folks. The local dev experience is heaven. It feels magical. Uh, it's one of those things that, like, anybody that's stuck in development, the second that you use this, it does feel magical. I, I do agree. And it's one of those things, why didn't we just ship this like this at the beginning? Uh, that's neither here nor there. But in order to use it, as she noted, in Winter 25 sandboxes, you go turn it on. We'll show you this in a second. Um, you guys can take pictures of this, but we're going we're gonna to show you live demo in a second. Um, but then you install the plugin uh, using for, for Salesforce Lightning app. And then there's some commands down below where you do Lightning Dev app. Uh, then there's some uh, subtopics where you can do device type iOS, Android, which device you want to use. And then ultimately, like we said, we want sites, we want mobile. Like we don't want to ship our org. We want to ship a great product. So ultimately, there you have dev site. You run that command. You'll be able to leverage uh, this with your LWR sites. But enough of a boring screen. Let's move over to a real live demo. Everything will work hunky-dory. <laughs> Don't jinx us, Greg. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we want to do is, you can see here that I am in setup, and you want to make sure that you have local dev enabled in your sandbox org. So if I go into setup and I type local, you can see that there's a new page here called local dev. And if you go there, you just want to make sure that you have enabled it. And on Lightning Apps, you can see that you've enabled it because you get this big, beautiful orange banner across the top of every single page to let you know that you have Lightning, uh, local dev enabled. And that way, no matter if you're building components on different Lightning Apps, you have multiple components, you get that quick iterative previews for the entire org while local dev is on. Okay, so if I go over to VS Code now, I am building a contact component, and I want to be able to modify that based on feedback that I received. So the first thing I want to do is I want to connect my VS code to the local dev org. And so you can see here that I have SF Lightning Dev app. This is for Lightning apps. And while we can specify the exact Lightning app or the org, we can also just specify, just launch it, and then I can navigate to where I want to do. So let's just launch it, and it's going to make that connection to my local dev org and then launch the page for me. Okay, and then you can see here that I am on the page. I will be working with this contact component, but it's really important that I'm gonna have mobile users as well. And so I wanna see how it's gonna look as I make my changes, how it's gonna look on desktop and on mobile. And so I'm gonna come over here and I can actually preview mobile at the same time. So I come in here. So with mobile, it's the same thing, SF Lightning Dev app, but of course, I want to view this in a Salesforce app on a simulator. So I'm gonna specify the device type iOS simulator, or just iOS, and then I'm gonna specify the specific simulator that I wanna use. I'm using an iPhone 15 Pro. Okay, and so it's gonna do the same thing that we did for desktop. It's gonna go ahead and make a connection to the org. It brings up my simulator, and for beta, we need to install a certificate in the simulator so it knows how to connect. I, we've already done that for you, so I can just skip this step. And then it goes and it launches the Salesforce app for you. If you don't have the Salesforce app in the simulator already, it will also ask you if you want to install it and help you do that. Okay? You will need to authenticate into the Salesforce app, but again, we've already logged in to the same org as with the, uh, the Lex site. Okay, so I'm bringing up the same page and I'm gonna look at the same component here. So I'm gonna scroll down, and like I said, we're gonna be modifying this contact component. Okay, so over here now in my VS Code, I've gotten feedback, like I said, that people don't really like um, this icon here that I'm using for contact. They say it's very sleepy. We don't wanna put people to sleep, so I'm gonna try a few others. So let's try the component 14. I hit save. Green definitely looks better, and I see that instantly <clears throat> for both. You can see on mobile and desktop, it refreshes instantly. If you didn't see it, take a look at the icon. I'll do it again. Let's try number 12, and then I hit save. And again, the component, the icon updates instantly. I don't have to publish anything to an org to see the changes. For Salesforce app, normally you have to kill the cat, like clear the cache, kill the app, go back in. None of that anymore. And the same thing in the HTML. Like, um, I got feedback, maybe we should add title, you know, in between 
the names. And I can see that as I do that, title appears there, but that doesn't look so good, so I can just remove it and hit save again. And it's not just HTML. So if I want to do this for JavaScript as well, say, you know, Betty's left. She's no longer. She got scared. Yeah, she got scared. She doesn't want to do the zip lines anymore. So we just remove her and hit save. And you can see here that uh, on both the desktop and in the app, uh, she's gone. So I can update the JavaScript, and I can see those changes just like that. But as I'm demoing this, Greg is wondering when we're going to talk about experience sites. <laughs> no, no. Like, I, I just truly, like, I, I saw a few people laugh when you mentioned the cache. Like, I'm so stoked to get this out there because, like, it's just so, like, changes everything. But, yeah, with, with sites, we can do the same thing. So if you go to that third one down, and then we'll run the command. Notice the only difference here is we're now calling out to a site, and we're giving the name of the site. And if you've worked with LWR sites, you know we deal with digital experience bundles. So that's effectively what's happening. We've already downloaded ours. It, normally, it would download it right now. One cool thing, Nick, shout out to Nick. Technically, I wasn't even expecting this to land by beta, but hats off to him. We actually cache it. So if there's a new publish, somebody else is working on the site with you and they hit publish, it'll say, hey, there's been a change to the site. Do you want to re-download? But it's not making you re-download over and over again. Uh, so I, I, I love it. So that said, we've showed you HTML, we've showed you JavaScript. 99.9% .9 of the time, we're tweaking pixel by pixel in CSS. So let's go over to CSS. Um, we're going to change this background over here in, in our site. We'll save it. It'll refresh. The context is that top right one. And man, this is just gorgeous. This is what we would want. <laughs> Our UX designers would really hate us at yeah, this point they, if we publish this. Yeah, we will not, we will not deploy this one. Uh, so, but you can see again, it's that instant feedback loop. Um, so we've gone across both the Lex applications, mobile, and now LWR sites. And so if we, if we go back then into the, the presentation, we can kind of hit on what's next and what's coming. So we're beta. We're at beta. Yay! Woo! We had confetti earlier. I love that. Thank you, Sue, for adding the confetti. It's exciting. We've got that unified experience. We've got the instant previews. You guys, by the way, saw it working real. It's not video. It's not fake. It's like legit works. So go use it. Go enable it. You saw how to do it. Most of you should. Your sandboxes should be updated to go enable it and start playing around with it. Um, and view it in the context of that larger application. That said, unlike the other one, we do not intend to keep this one in beta. For years. So, for, for years, <laughs> yes. So spring 25, we'll be going GA with it. Uh, we are going to do some refinements. You probably saw some logging going on in the console and all that wonderful stuff. We'll refine the different uh, aspects of that. We'll add authentication into the site support. Uh, we'll continue to make uh, feedback. While we've gotten some praise, we have gotten some you know, constructive feedback on what we already have today. And we'll continue to make those improvements. And then also, as you know, she noted with regards to the certificate, where we're going to continue to refine to remove some of those manual steps, you still have to do. Because that's our whole goal, is get that 4x to a default of 6x. Let's just keep making that faster and faster and faster. And then in the future, while the local dev doesn't solve everything, and it does add that additional, like, I've tested it locally, but now I've deployed it, now I have to test it again, there are solid use cases to wanting to start off in isolation with a single component. So we are looking into that, as well as adding code builder support, Improving VS Code IDE experience, for example, like right clicks or going into the command palette. Last, definitely not least, yeah. too. Yeah, for mobile, we have multiple use cases. While, you know, for beta and for GA, we have Salesforce app. There's a session right before here. There's a huge, a lot of uh, people using field service uh, or Salesforce app for offline use cases. So they want that same experience as well. And also, you know, experience sites for mobile. And we want to deliver those, uh, the same local dev to those experiences, too. Yeah, so we're super excited about the future, and we're super excited about your feedback. Um, so please uh, scan this code, sandbox, uh, winner 25, uh, scan this code, provider feedback, and it's also got links out to the tutorials and stuff like that. Um, also, get coffee. Uh, <laughs> survey, like it, it was very quiet in here, so please get co coffee on us. Okay, well now thank you so much, everybody. You all have a wonderful day. <laughs>